Well, here's the thing with The Last Vermeer. Firstly, is, I mean, it is based on a true story, but it takes, I mean, very, very great liberties with the story. You know, every, I mean, I, we don't want to spoil anything, but just when you watch it, you think, OK, this has to be kind of you know, artistic license. This has to be artistic invention. Then you go back and you read the actual, you go, OK, it is. It's there is an awful lot of dramatic license taken. The reason that dramatic license is taken is because it is more dramatic. So the two things going on, one of them is how close is it to telling the actual story, which is, well, the sort of the basic coordinates are true, but everything else is, you know, it is, it is invented. The second thing is, as a piece of drama, is it engaging? And I have to say that I found his character very, very engaging. I mean, right from right from the beginning, when you meet him, and he is this peacocking, you know, head back, hair, moustache, you're saying, you know, eyebrows, everything about him, I actually found dramatically engaging. Plus, Clace Bang is terrific in almost everything. I mean, it's kind of interesting that Clace Bang was in um, the square in which he played a gallery owner, which I think was executive produced by Dan Friedkin. And then we saw him recently in Burnt Orange Heresy, in which he's an art critic who talks a lot about how much what you know about the background of a painting affects the way in which you might perceive the painting and you know, whether or not it's, it's real or genuine. So Clay's Bang has clearly got a thing at the moment, which is send me a script. Is it to do with art? If so, I'm on board. Yeah. Also, Clay's Bang, Clay's Bang is the actor with the coolest name of any actor in the whole world. So the two of them together, I think, is, you know, is, is really good fun to watch. It is also true that some of the other characters therefore get sidelined. And it is also true that therefore, you know, the drama is all to do with the kind of the relationship between those two and the fiery sparks. Plus, I am also slightly a sucker for anything about forgery because I've always there's one line in, in the film. This isn't a spoiler in which something is revealed to be a forgery. And our central character says it suddenly it's, it has no value. And yet nothing about it has changed. And I have always been interested in that. You know, if the value in something lies simply from where it came from rather than what it is what does that tell you about the value of art and i've always been somebody who's been fascinated by this idea that you know a modern work of art sells for millions and millions and millions because somebody decided that that's what it's worth um that this doesn't have the depth of something like never look away and as i said it, it is it is kind of a preposterous confection in terms of its dramatic high points but in the end, what I enjoyed about it was this performance of this, you know, very, very kind of vain, self-obsessed character. Also, as a critic, I love the idea that his character, who is driven by the fact that he got absolutely panned by the critics and therefore decided that there was one way of yeah. getting even, which was to demonstrate that they don't know anything. So I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's a substantial piece by any means. But I did enjoy it. And I think I'm right in saying that I enjoyed it more than you did. Yes. Yes, probably. I mean, I, I, I did enjoy it because it is a compelling story. Although you know, the name of the book that it comes from does give away <laughs> an awful lot. So, you know, it's not really that much of a spoiler. And you can probably guess uh, which way it's going. I found this. It's very important that this takes place, obviously, just after the Second World War. I found the street scenes of uh, revenge uh, being taken out uh, very staid and and unconvincing uh, and not really uh, very threatening and the reason i asked about the dutch accent apart from the fact i'm genuinely interested in accents and dialects yeah. anyway but uh Clay Spang, who is a terrific actor to me sounded as though he came from essex and <laughs> and so i did not for one minute believe that he was a dutch resistance fighter nothing in his acting but because he was talking to an australian i th i i th I just sort of I I was just thinking I don't, I'm not really on board with this. But then the drama of the story in the courtroom and the, and the battle and the talk about chemistry and the baker light and alcohol swabs and all this trying to work out what's a fake and what isn't a fake and is it art or is it not art? I, you know. So I was yeah. taken along by that in the end. I mean, it is it is a you can't handle the truth movie. It is you know a film full of grandstanding moments that are entirely made up, you know, and, and the rest of it. But so, you know, I enjoyed it as that rather than as anything else. And I, I also, I mean, I, I always enjoy Guy Pearce because he is, as I think he demonstrated in that interview, he he gives 100%. I, I can't remember the last time I saw him coasting. He looks like he really enjoys what he's doing. 